This is John McAfee, the eccentric tech millionaire, playboy, suspected murderer, international fugitive, presidential candidate, crypto enthusiast, and the same man behind that annoying software called McAfee Antivirus that you probably have installed on your computer right now if you have Windows. And got the Urban Dictionary definition for McAfee. McAfee, a barely passable virus scanning program that updates at the worst possible times tends to render your computer completely useless whenever it starts an update, which it doesn't ask to start, and you cannot cancel or pause. Leading up to his apparent taking of his own life, John lived a wild existence, to put it nicely. They're really quite different. <laughs> Hello there. And I do what I want, when I want. The Traveler's Guide to Cheap Put- When McAfee was 15, his father took his own life. And when asked about it by ABC 2020 in May 2017, just four years before his own apparent taking of his own life, this is what he had to say about it. Dad, when you were 15? 15. Yeah, he shot himself. He shot himself? Yeah. People always look to the past to explain the present. It doesn't work that way. June 9, 2019, while saying he was trapped in Cuba, McAfee tweets this warning. I've collected files on corruption in governments. For the first time, I'm naming names and specifics. I'll begin with a corrupt CIA agent and two Bahamian officials. Coming today, if I'm arrested or disappear, 31 terabytes of incriminating data will be released to the press. July 23, 2019, McAfee was arrested at a port in the Dominican Republic. October 3, 2020, McAfee was arrested at an airport in Spain while trying to flee the country to Turkey. The US wanted to extradite him on tax evasion charges. His manager takes to McAfee's Twitter account to post another warning. If John misses his next check-in, events will be set into motion that I cannot prevent once they have begun. John has secreted data with individuals across the world. I know neither their identities or locations. They will release their payloads if John goes missing. November 30, 2019. McAfee gets the word whacked, tattooed on his arm with the following tweet. Getting subtle messages from US officials saying in effect, we're coming for you McAfee, we're going to kill yourself. I got a tattoo today just in case. If I super yourself, I didn't, I was whacked. Check my right arm. Ticker symbol whacked also happens to be a meme coin he made available only on McAfeeDex.com, a website that is no longer up. Having dealt with governments, I think all governments are the same. They, they, they do not have much of a heart, sir. June 15, 2021, after eight months in a Spanish prison, this video was released. If I am extradited, it is certain that I will spend the rest of my life in prison because the United States wants to use me as an example. June 20, 2021, five days later, John's wife releases this message on Twitter. John's honesty has often gotten him in trouble with corrupt governments and corrupt government officials because of his outspoken nature and his refusal to be extorted, intimidated, or silenced. Now the US authorities are determined to have John die in prison to make an example out of him for speaking out against the corruption within their government agencies. And just three days after his wife's prophetic tweet, John McAfee found dead today in a prison cell in Spain. Bernard John McAfee has reportedly been found dead in his Spanish jail cell. John McAfee, the legendary eccentric tech entrepreneur, was found dead in his prison cell outside Barcelona in what authorities are calling an apparent suicide. And within minutes of this news breaking, his official Instagram account posted this cryptic picture with no caption, referencing the online group that starts with a Q and ends with a non that YouTube doesn't like people mentioning. And the 31 terabytes of incriminating data that John and his manager promised would be released, it's nowhere to be found, at least not yet. And also within minutes of this news breaking, you guys start blasting me on Instagram to make a video about it, at jaketrent.io if you're not already following me. <sighs> so here we are. Did he off himself? Could he as a 75 year old man with deteriorating health not take it anymore? Or did the US government have something to do with it? Or maybe it was some other corrupt government officials around the world he managed to piss off. This is the ridiculous, bizarre, strange rise and suspicious death of John McAfee. And this video was sponsored by McAfee Antivirus, I mean Magic Spoon! You guys know Magic Spoon, the insanely healthy cereal that maintains that healthiness, while tasting as good as all the sugary, unhealthy, delicious cereal you had as a kid. And you guys have been loving Magic Spoon. And as a tradition on the Jake Tran channel, you guys get to watch me make a fool of myself while eating cereal on camera. 
It's got zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net carbs in every serving. My favorite flavors are coca, chocolate, fruity, lusa fruit, and cinnamon. And of course, what other brand out there would be okay with getting plugged in a video like this? Not many. Support them and support yourself by going to magicspoon.com slash jaketrend to get a variety pack right now. Be sure to use promo code jaketrend to get $5 off your order now in the US and Canada. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash jaketrend with the link below. Pause the video, do it right now. All right, you just did it. Back to the video. John David McAfee was born on a US Army base in England in 1945. His mom was British and his dad, an American, was stationed there with the army. McAfee ended up growing up in Roanoke, Virginia. His father was an abusive alcoholic who would beat him, until his dad took his own life with a shotgun in the bathroom. McAfee was only 15 years old at the time. In school, McAfee was definitely not the nerd you imagine would become one of the biggest tech entrepreneurs of the 20th century. He admitted that although he did get straight A's and did really well in math, he was a lazy kid that almost never studied. His very first take on entrepreneurship was in college when he started to sell the one thing he knew would always be in demand, Coke. No, not the drink. Actual cocaine. In college, McAfee says he began peddling a product he knew he could sell. Cocaine. But it's interesting that, that drug dealing was really your first foray into entrepreneurship. Yeah, well, it, it is entre it's entrepreneurship. It's, it's everything. It's salesmanship. College was also when he developed his own drinking habit. After college, he got fired from one job for buying weed, and at his next job scheduling trains with computers, he would take LSD in the morning before work. One day, he tried a dose of DMT but didn't feel anything. So he snorted the entire bag. That drinking and drug habit eventually turned into an addiction and by 1983, he joined Alcoholics Anonymous. Then he got a position as a programmer at Lockheed Martin. And in 1986, as home computers were taking off, two brothers in Pakistan launched the world's first computer virus nicknamed Brain and McAfee saw an opportunity he couldn't pass up. 1987. McAfee launches McAfee Associates to create his all-in-one antivirus software, called VirusScan, which was the first of its kind and covered all the dozen or so computer viruses that existed back then. A computer virus is a programmer written by a hacker with a unique purpose, and that purpose is to multiply and live. The software worked and he decided to make it free for anyone to use. Within the first month of its launch, 4 million people were using it. And by 1990, millions of computers were using it and companies were paying over $5 million a year to license it. And by 1992, more than half of the Fortune 500 companies had McAfee on their computers. McAfee became a tech icon. Not too bad for a software he created in a day and a half. The McAfee antivirus was created in a day and a half. Yes. Five years later, over half the Fortune 500 companies in the country had begun using it. He became the leading voice on the threat of computer viruses and by 1992, McAfee Associates IPO'd, making him worth $80 million. But trouble was just around the corner. In 1994, McAfee was pushed out of management, so he sold his shares for $100 million and left the company. And from there, he would spend the next one and a half decades living the life of a tech mogul with more money than he knew what to do with. He bought multiple cars, built nine homes, became an adrenaline junkie, became a new age yoga guru, then built an adventurous sports resort in New Mexico. What did you do with the money? I wasted it like everybody has money. His next chapter, creating pleasure. a yoga retreat in your Colorado, name. reinventing himself as a new age guru, bestowing his eternal wisdom on his guests. The man was bored and needed to keep himself entertained. But by 2008, McAfee says he kept getting hit with frivolous lawsuits by people who wanted to take his money. And by 2009, he has seemingly hit hard times and had to auction everything off he owned. Nightline covered this auction on McAfee's ranch where everything, including his beloved airplanes, Winnebago's exotic art collection, even the gold elephant and dinosaur skull, went on the block. Years later, he would claim that this was all a ruse to make it look like he was broke so the lawsuits would stop. McAfee now claims it was all a charade, a ruse. He was just trying to look broke so people would stop suing him. McAfee took his remaining millions and headed to Belize in Central America in search of a more simple life. Little did he know that this would be the start of his life as a suspected murderer and international fugitive. McAfee started life in Belize on a beachfront property, but then eventually moved to the jungles of Belize to start a lab to research plant-grown antibiotics. He hired a microbiologist to lead the effort and with it, a harem of girls and ex-felons he hired as bodyguards, or what critics would call his own private militia. That microbiologist would later claim McAfee committed a heinous crime against her that McAfee strongly denies and was never tried for. I'm not gonna touch that with a 10-foot pole. But even greater trouble was just around the corner. April 2012, corrupt officials in Belize were trying to extort McAfee for money and McAfee wouldn't play ball, so they raided his lab under the claim that he was making drugs in the compound. Or at least that's what McAfee claims. 
McAfee claims the government was harassing him because he wouldn't pay bribes. I was on the verge of something. When I refused to pay an extortion for $2 million, and a week later, the gang suppression unit destroyed my lab. No drugs were found, and the American media ate it up. After all, an American millionaire with a history of drugs in the jungles of Belize, where girls and armed ex-felons around him, didn't look so good and made for a great story. I can see both sides of the story. And after that, he moved back to his beach house in Belize, bringing back the girls, the armed guards, and a pack of nine wild dogs with them, which would be the start of yet another graze with the law. But this time, instead of being a suspected drug lord, he becomes a suspected murderer. McAfee's neighbor was a man named Greg Fall. Greg was another American looking for a peaceful retirement in the Caribbean, but it was anything but peaceful because of McAfee's dogs. They were crazy, barked all the time, were aggressive towards anyone walking by, and McAfee had no intention of fixing the problem. Now, we're going to be walking past McAfee's house, and there's going to be dogs there. Now, they're usually fenced up, but he says, I just want to warn you. So Greg concocted a plan and told his friends, if McAfee wasn't going to take care of his dogs, he was going to. Greg had told him that he was going to poison the dog. Then not too long after, some poison meat was thrown into McAfee's backyard. All nine dogs ate it and all nine died. The next night, someone snuck into Greg Fall's home and murdered him at gunpoint. The house showed no sign of forced entry. Nothing was taken from inside. The prime suspect, of course, is McAfee, who of course denies the charges. Let me make this perfectly clear. I had nothing to do with the murder of Gregory Fall. One of McAfee's beachfront caretakers recounts in an interview for the Showtime documentary Gringo that he was instructed by McAfee to pay $5,000 to somebody he believed to be the hitman McAfee hired for the job. The following morning, sometime around 9 o'clock, John called me, he said, um, take this money, $5,000, and go put it in this guy's account. Cashin says the man who got that money called him late the night of the murder to come pick him up. Then I realized that this $5,000 was for him to do that. To do what? Uh, to kill the guy. Later on, that same man appeared in a video on McAfee's YouTube channel retracting all the claims he made in that interview. He claimed that Showtime offered him $10,000, a stupid amount of money for anyone in Belize, for a 30-minute interview. And he decided that for that 10 k he'll fabricate whatever lies they wanted to hear, that he was pushed during the interview that he believes McAfee had nothing to do with that murder. $10,000 in Belize is a lot of money for 30 minutes, you know, who will go against that? So I started to think what I can improvise, what lies I can fabricate, to make it credible. So I accepted and I realized that I'm going to improvise. And so whatever I told Nanette on that interview was a pure fabrication of my imagination, lies, and to make it more credible, that is what I did. I believe in my heart that John had nothing to do with that murder. You can watch the video for yourself on YouTube if you want to. For the most part, it looks natural. Some parts were kind of scripted, but I will let you be the judge of that. McAfee was never charged with murder, but in 2015, a Florida court ordered him to pay $25 million for being liable for Greg's death. So is McAfee a murderer? On one hand, having nine of your dogs poisoned as an eccentric millionaire were armed guards that you could easily pay, and being that the murder happened literally the next day after the dogs were poisoned, doesn't look good. On the other hand, the media dying for a juicy story bribing a poor laborer that needs money also sounds plausible. And after being accused of murder, McAfee starts his escape back to America. Why did you go on the run? Because if I didn't go on the run, I'd be a dead man now. They're trying to arrest me for coming into the country illegally. McAfee first spent three months in the jungle before fleeing to Guatemala, where he was arrested in 2012. The whole arrest was caught on camera by Vice. He faked a heart attack while he was being arrested, was transported to the hospital with press following him, and then miraculously opened his eyes to tell the nurses not to undress him in front of the cameras. You faked the heart attack. Sure, I faked it. He was then deported back to America where he met his wife as a prostitute in Miami. Back in America, he started to build his life back again, becoming a voice for the dangers of cyber warfare. The media liked to call him the prophet of digital doom and other names like that during this period. But when you listen to what he had to say, it's pretty reasonable and he makes some great points. If they did understand it, the Chinese would not have been able to steal 21 million records of every person who has worked for the U.S. government for the past 50 years. The U.S. government has, has made them the enemy. We need to hire these people. The Russians and the Chinese are more practical. He also never went back to paying U.S. income taxes since arriving back in America because he believes income taxes aren't right. A noble decision that I commend, but that will come back to haunt him. In 2016, McAfee also decided to run for president under the Libertarian Party. It didn't go so well. By 2017, 
McAfee started becoming a huge advocate for cryptocurrencies as a way to prevent governments from collecting income taxes. When privacy coins are widely used, governments will no longer be able to collect income taxes. Where one of the things he would do was to share coin of the day tweets, where he would talk about all coins that he believed had value. McAfee announces he's running for president again in the 2020 ballot, and because of this advocacy against taxes against big government promoting crypto, by 2018, McAfee could feel things were starting to really heat up. After all, he was openly not paying taxes, openly committing a crime, making him an easy target. I have not paid taxes for eight years. I've made no secret of it. I have not filed returns. And by January 22nd, he flees the US while at the same time, the IRS was convening a grand jury in Tennessee to charge him, his wife, and four of his campaign workers with IRS-related felonies. McAfee posts this video while on the run. Today, January 22nd, the IRS has convened a grand jury in the state of Tennessee to charge myself, my wife, Mrs. McAfee, four of my campaign workers with unspecified IRS crimes of a felonious nature. Today, crypto community, we are at war. Which brings us back to where we were at the beginning of this video and everything leading up to his arrest on October 3rd, 2020 in Spain. That same month, that court in Tennessee charged him for tax evasion, demanding that he be extradited back to the US to face trial. And after six grueling months in prison, McAfee was slapped with a federal indictment on crypto fraud charges in March 2021. He was charged with tax evasion, failure to file taxes, and securities fraud for those altcoin shadows on Twitter, making it one of the first big criminal cases to involve crypto. Federal prosecutors accused him of scamming his large Twitter following with altcoins as an age-old pump-and-dump scheme. McAfee says the US government wanted to make an example out of me for encouraging people not to pay income taxes and so forth, which I 100% agree with. Because let's face it, Elon Musk has moved the crypto and stock markets way more than McAfee ever has, yet he hasn't faced any pump-and-dump charges. This just goes to show how subjective laws and prosecuting can be, which leads us to his taking of his own life. If I have extradited it, it is certain that I will spend the rest of my life in prison because the United States wants to use me as an example. So, did he off himself? Well, it's important to note that we are now entering speculation land with very limited facts about what actually happened. But here are both sides of the argument. Listen, the guy was 75 on the run for a good chunk of his life, just got word that he was about to be extradited back to the US for a case that was already set against him, his health was already taking a toll, and he would most likely die in prison. So if you were in his shoes, you could see how this would make a man weigh his options. And let's face it, the US does have a history of assassinating people way more powerful than McAfee. But on the other hand, was the stuff he was saying and doing that bad enough to justify a hit? As to the theatrics and the whack tattoo, and the threats of releasing incriminating data, well, it could have been a bluff to get his enemies off his back. And as you can tell, he's a man that loves attention, so might as well go out with a bang with some mystery. On the other hand, his wife came out and said that he showed no signs of wanting to off himself, that the extradition order was not a surprise to them and they already had plans laid out. John McAfee was not super I spoke with him a few hours before he was found dead. We spoke about the court's decision to extradite him to the US. It did not come as a surprise to either of us. We were prepared for that decision and had a plan of action already in place to appeal that decision. I blame the US authorities for this tragedy. Because of these politically motivated charges against him, my husband is now dead. His lawyer said the same thing. And if anyone would be able to gather incriminating evidence against people in power, it would be a millionaire cybersecurity expert on the run. So did he off himself? I'm gonna lean on the side of, I don't know, probably not the answer you wanted to hear, but until we get more evidence, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I personally don't think this is as clear cut of a case as the other very prominent case of a powerful man that had an island who offed himself, whose first name starts with a J and last name starts with an E, but I think the life of John McAfee can be summed up in this one tweet he made while in prison. My life's conflicts stem from one source. My best friend and my worst enemy were both myself. So what do you think really happened with John McAfee? Let me know in the comments below. Try to keep it civil down there. And of course, Magic Spoon. You guys know what to do. Link below, magicspoon.com slash jaketran with the coupon code jaketran for $5 off your order now in the US and Canada. If you enjoy videos like this, we make them every single week for free on the most provocative stuff in the world of business, geopolitics, power, all of the above. 
all you have to do is click that subscribe button below. If you want more behind the scenes stuff, day in the life kind of stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at jtrend.io. It will be linked below or you can just go to jtrend.io. That is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.